Hello and welcome back to episode 7 of Building a Narrow Gauge Railway. If you've seen the previous videos, you would know that Tony's Trains of Rugby has encouraged me to build a layout for Statfold Barn Model Railway Show, which is on this 1st and 2nd of April. I'm looking forward to going and I'm going to be building this 3 metre long layout. 2 metres of it being scenic and half a metre each end will be the fiddle yard. The hard bits for me so far is basically been time limits. Um, he did actually speak to me a little while ago to get it done um, and I was like yeah fine and I've got loads of time anyway. I left it kind of with six weeks to do it but then I had a trip to Arizona as I talked to you guys about before um, as well as various work weekends and family commitments. So with my evenings available and the odd Saturday that might crop up we've been working on it and what do I have here? There's not much to look at here. This is the third module that we've got to which is hopefully the most simple but when you say things like that you think well you're gonna bite yourself there. So this layout is stemming from the station which then came from the siding. Uh, the siding and the station are looking nice if you haven't already seen them. Check out the last episode and episode 4 and you can see them in all their glory. Really pleased with how they've turned out. Big thank you to those that have already been commenting and um, let me know what they think of it. It's been really good support. I've been sharing it on Instagram as well and uh, really appreciating the, the likes and the kind of effectively the thumbs ups that I've been getting from this. So this is a scale model scenery baseboard that we built up on the first video when we first got these. These are really simple to get together, a bit of wood glue to hold them together. Um, and after that we stuck on some XPS foam. Um, as well as that I've used some wallpaper paste to put on some um, backing paper for when you do wallpapering um, for the back scene which will then will get painted blue very shortly. A massive thank you to Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane Model Railways. He's been brilliant in giving me some advice for some bits I'm up to. He does this all the time um, and has thrown some gems at me on things I can do to make it better. One of the things I loved the most was the corner on the corner tabletop using the, the backing paper to act as the curve. That was an absolute winner. Go check out the other videos if you haven't already seen them. What's this video going to be all about? We're going to be adding effectively a woodland scene. We're going to have a very simple route, which will kind of I'll add a bit of curvature to it, but ultimately will be quite straight. The reason is, is when it gets to the other side, when it gets to where the bridge will be, which is the last module, um, I want it to start coming in to the centre from there. Kind of gives it a bit more to the eye to watch. For this one, we're going to have the track going down here. I'm going to put lots of trees in here and bushes. And on the front, as you've seen on the others, we're going to sweep down the front. Why am I doing that? That's so when you're looking at it from a lower angle, you don't just have a board here and then you see the layout. It means that if you're taking pictures or if I'm filming, I get a nicer view. So it kind of kind of takes the eye isn't focusing on the front, but it blends it into what you want to look at a bit more. So that's something that I find uh, quite pleasing. Anyway, so we're going to crack on with this. What I found with some of the other episodes, I've put a lot of time into working on them and recorded all of it and it's taken a long time to edit and with not a lot of time left um you know it, i've got two weeks now this is sunday um with next weekend free to work on it um and then really i need to be at statfold barn on the friday um with the, the layout up so i've got not a huge amount of time it seems like a lot but it's not because i could do editing for each video and release them um there might be a, a, a chance that i just do all the work and then I edit later and release these videos after it but I really enjoy the journey of sharing this with you as I'm doing it so I'm going to try and simplify the editing so what I'm going to do for this episode is I'm not going to talk about too much of what I'm going to do I'm going to kind of get um, the video going on quickly on bits maybe talk a little bit as we get halfway and then we'll talk about it at the end when it's got there so I'm pretty excited about getting this one done because it should be the fastest out of all of them to do pending on any other issues that come up um, but we'll go from there but the first thing I need to do is get the other layout onto it attach it on we need to then add the curvature to the front to work out where we are for when we add the uh, hanging basket liner on the front there and with that uh, we then need to match up the track with the copper clad sleepers they sit on here and that runs over there to down the other end let's get on with it 
on this area I'm just going to trim out uh, where we have the grass where I extended it past because I knew I'm going to have to give it a trim. I'm just going to slice up here, make a little bit of a mess but try and keep our line straight. I don't want it to be sub on the surface because then when I put the other side on it, it might get some issues there. So throw that in the bin. We'll line this up and then we can make a nice mark of the curvature and try and match it off. It's always going to be a little bit difficult and if I get any issues I can always add some shrubbery or I'm sure you'll forgive me if not. I've taken a selection of sea foam trees and whilst the tracks drying and gluing in place I thought let's prepare them. My plan is to spray them all brown so then the obviously the trunk that's going to be going up will be the arguably the correct colour. So browny grey colours are normally very good for this. I was thinking about using the airbrush but I did grab a can of spray paint. It's called um, what's it called? Well, mushroom champagne. I've got a towel. I'll move all these out of the way. We're going to spray them brown, let them dry, and then we're going to add some flock to the top. It's nice and easy, quick trees for these. So, grab this here. And that's it. So then, when we have the flock on there, it will look right. I'll do the rest of these and then we'll look at doing the flock. It's the next day and we're gonna use some of this hanging basket liner as you've seen on previous videos which is one of the areas where I spoke about Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane, one of railways, he advised me to use this. And we're going to stick it down on all of this area, just that will hang over this edge um, and then come up to this front lip here. Um, we're going to stop um, about a centimetre in front of it, so I'll draw a line which is uniform from this edge here. And the idea is that we eventually put a fence in over here. Um, behind, I'll be doing the same. 
a um, little bit more tricky because it's got a slightly smaller shape but easy enough because it's only a small area um, and then we'll continue with uh, looking at ballasting and stuff like that and then continue with trees, static grass and all the different other fun things that um, will build up what will be the woods. I've gone through the route of trimming back any bits that are kind of really sticking out and looking terrible. Some bits look okay. Um, I've got to run the hoover over it or vacuum cleaner. Um, just give it a clean off because my next plan is to just put on some ballast on this track. Nice and simple to do this. Um, I do want to paint the track as well so I'll throw some paint on the track um, and then put the ballast over the top. Um, and then after that we can think a bit more about what we're going to do before we put trees in and things like that. The trees are yet to be finished, I've painted them brown. Um, so I need to do a bit more with that. Um, but I want to get some stuff going on with this so then that can dry because that will take, that's yeah, at least overnight to let the ballast dry. Um, it's always, because uh, it's such a watery mix, it always takes that longer amount of time. So yeah, like I said, hoover it off, we'll paint and ballast and then we're good from there. So I've painted the track, simply using some raw amber. We're gonna get that on there. Obviously so much comes out when you use these, but they're a really good price for what they are. Make sure we close your cap. And obviously want to introduce some other colors. Um, there's a brighter color here. We don't need to do too much of the bright. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit in there. Didn't need much of that. And obviously we wanna darken it down a bit with some black at stages and so we got those sitting in there if you want to you could obviously squeeze a bit of grey in yeah, but this isn't a tapestry that we're trying to paint we're just putting some colours on here so we mix up our colours we don't want to go on too thick and we just dob it on and you can come back over it's, it's quite simple when you're when you're doing these tasks um, you know, if something's not the right colour, you can just come back with another colour and just touch it in over the top. So I'll paint this, it's not going to take long. Um, I might touch the edge of the track with a bit of red, but I'm not too worried about it. I might add some staining later for the edge of the track to give it a slightly different look. And you could use your burnt sienna on the sides and make it look that colour, but I always find it always looks very bright when we do that. So I'm not too interested in making it stand up because we're gonna be adding trees and hiding it. So there's no stress on that one. So yeah, enjoy. balancing it's very easy we're gonna as you've seen in the other videos if you haven't already seen it we're going to uh, run the ballast in the gaps of the sleepers we use the brush to tap it down into place and make sure that it's not sitting all over the sleepers it's okay if some bits go over um, so we tap that all down get that all looking really tidy which you'll see and then we're gonna use some of I can of it's more of like a 30 uh, percent of kind of PVA mix of water um, and with that we obviously drop that over the top I put some um, detergent in there 
so then it should cut through the stones as it goes in and it seeps in nicely. If you want to help it go down easier, I use a mix of water and isopropyl alcohol. I can spray it over and it helps it go in, but um, I think if you have some detergent in your fairy liquid, you'll be all right. And actually it will dry a bit quicker. When I put this on first, and then I use the glue. I find it takes a lot longer to dry. So that's something to consider if you are kind of trying to get it done a bit quicker, which I am. So I'm gonna try just this with my detergent inside, see how it is. So like I said, 30% PVA, the rest will be water, and then you can put a drop of detergent in there and make sure that it bubbles up when you shake it. You know you've got enough in there then. So I'll get on with this and uh, speed up the process as I always do on this uh, video, and you can enjoy seeing me put some of this ballast on. So I've ballasted this, I'm gonna let it dry for a bit, but obviously I can't do anything with that, but we can continue with the layouts. What I want to do at the back here, because we're not gonna see so much, I'm gonna use some of the static grass that I've got, which is slightly longer, and it's not my, kind of, let's say, favorite color, favorite blend, because that's gonna more sit around the front. So I'm gonna put a load of this static grass just in the back, and maybe a few bits around here. Um, so then we can start putting the trees in because where the trees aren't is where the nice grass is going to be, right? So the idea for me now is static grass in some areas. I don't actually have a lot of my spray that I've been using. So I'm actually going to use just a bit of wood glue and spot it in here. And hopefully that sticks that sticks really nicely. And after that I can put bushes back here and then we can start working on the trees, can't we? So let's continue with that and uh, yeah, have fun. So I've stuck in some bushes, I've put the static grass on and I've added in some blended turf so I've kind of made it not look all uniform. The front will get done last with my favourite colour just to help blend it in with the other modules. I have got grass on the ballast because I didn't let it dry but actually it's in the forest, bits of grass will be growing through and I can pick bits off that I'm not happy with so once that's dry we can work on that. My next step is to work on the trees. The trees I've worked on, 
are the sea foam trees and I need to add some leaves to them now. So that's what we'll continue with. So we've got these effectively, <laughs> it's a tree armature, but it's not. It's a sea foam tree. Uh, you saw me spraying them brown earlier. Now what I want to do is add some leaves. I've got some, well a variety actually, of different leaf options. So some are from Green Scenes. So this is Green Scenes. I don't actually have the number for that one, um, but they, they vary. Um, Knock do some nice ones. One second, so this is, I can't even see what part number this is see there. But I've got, for example, Knock, they do leaves, light green. So it's pretty light, uh, maybe too light for what we want to do. Um, but there's lots of leaf options out there. Look up green scenes, um, tremendous. And then there's kind of other ways of doing trees. There's loads of tree tutorials on, on YouTube and in magazines um, and various DVDs that help them. So I'm not gonna teach any of you how to suck eggs, but at doing this, doing it over box to collect all of this. So when I apply my glue, I don't want it dripping on here and then all my bits sticking to it. So we'll do it over um, the back of something. Get a bit of paper here. Pop some paper there. And what I'm gonna do is I've, I've thinned down some glue so it's not super thick. Um, I know I could use some hairspray if I need to, to stick it on. I'm gonna start with um, this watered down glue is my first layer. And it's probably not gonna go on very easy. Um, but it's as simple as that really. We're just gonna put it on and then we sprinkle on our our leaves. And with that, obviously it's going everywhere. Um, and with that we can reapply later on, maybe using the hairspray or even dobbing on some more glue. We'll see if this works. I've not I was thinking about just using my matte lacquer, but I've actually just run out. I've ordered some, it should be here. Well, I'm recording this, it'll be here tomorrow. Um, I would just spray it and put it on, but we'll go and do it in a way that you know everyone's got a bit of PVA glue sitting around. So all we do is where we have our leaves. Turn it over the box so then I can put it back in afterwards. We just drop it on the top and apply our leaves. And hopefully it sticks to everything. What I might use is my hairspray to lock some of it in place. I don't think all the glue is necessarily going to be everywhere that I want it to be. But this is a fun task because it's messy. <laughs> Most fun tasks messy. Um, obviously the tidy ones are fun too I'm sure but when we drop this on we're hoping it sticks to the, the right kind of areas and if not we can add some more later go from there so I'm kind of happy with how much is on here I wanted it to be on the end of the branches so what I do is I'll use some hairspray and it's probably gonna fire everywhere now so I do it from a distance there we are it's like a max hold hairspray and we'll just let that dry now and yeah we might have to reapply after so just lay it down gently <laughs> not knocking everything off um, yeah so hopefully that makes sense obviously the bits that I've got here I can use again to add on to another one so it's very simple what I did before we just dob it on and continue so as always I'll speed up the camera and you can see me apply it to all of these I'll probably use some different colors as I'm going and have a lot of fun as I'm doing it
all the trees. They're all in front of me. If we can zoom out. I've got some here. So I've been playing with lots of different colours, lots of different shades, um, and kind of textures as well. So we've got the ones that are kind of more like cardboardy almost there. They're the very leafy ways. I've got the foamy ones that are on here. I use the paintbrush to put the glue on the outside and then lock it in with that hairspray and they come out really nicely. Got lots of small ones here. I've um, got ones with various different colours. Kind of slowly stick into the table, kind of lay them down, but you know they've come out really, really nicely. Um, got again, a large one here, again another nice colour here. Hopefully, yeah, reasonably in focus, isn't it? It's been getting very messy in here. My fingers <laughs> are very glued together, but I'm really happy. Like some of them I haven't gone too heavy on the leaves, so you can still see the branches. So that looks nice. I mean, for some of the, the lighter colours, I don't know how they're going to look on it, but they should blend in with the other ones. That's quite a large one there. Not too keen on the shape, but it'd be fine. Then I went for one dark one. Um, I fancied, uh, you know, you can slide that in then, but I'm not sure about it. Um, again, like the lighter ones here, they're looking pretty good. I'm going to have to really clean my table afterwards. So then I did a load that were, I've still got the glue kind of drying on there. Hopefully the white dots go away. I feel like they might not. <laughs> um, yeah, it apparently dries clear. But anyway, so we've got these ones which are kind of a more towards an olive colour. Which I quite like the colour uh, in the packet and you know on the small ones it looks pretty good. Um, so we'll see, once these have all dried I'll come back tomorrow um, and we'll see what, what they look like really. I'm hoping all the white droplets disappear. You can see you know, they've got the, quite a few white bits here. Um, hopefully it all dries clear and doesn't cause me any bother. If not, I need to kind of paint them out a little bit. But I think if I prod them with the paintbrush, I can break them up a little bit. And we can, you know, figure it out from there. But anyway, that's kind of the tree making. It's pretty simple. See if I'm, put some glue on, put on the stuff. The flock, you know, there's loads of different companies that do the flock. and. Uh, it's very enjoyable today. Uh, it's not something you should do when you're in a rush because you should enjoy this kind of thing. Just like ballasting. I know how much some people really love ballasting. Um, so yeah, so I'm not gonna complain about what I've done here. I'm really pleased. It's been really fun. I've been wanting to do it for ages. I did one sea foam tree for the siding layouts. Um, it looked okay. Um, it wasn't the best thing I think. Um, that I've ever done, uh, but these have allowed me to play a little bit more and play with colours and work out what I like a bit more. So yeah, I hope some of you benefited from that. Um, we'll come back to me with this being drier and we can put the trees on the layout um, as well as some other little bits that we'd like to do, which should hopefully finish off the scene pretty sharpishly so then we can get on to the next module um, which is going to be a little bit more time consuming but I think the station was the longest in regards to you know whatever is time consuming um, whereas this one is quite a quick layout so very very pleased that I've done it and it hasn't taken too long and hopefully you've learnt something along the way. Before we stick these trees down I wanted to go through the fencing this is the fencing from Ratio and it's basically this one it's obviously all the Pico items under their range and it's the wooden line side fencing and black. I painted it brown using the same spray can that I've used to paint the wood for the trees I'm sure you won't notice once it's on. I've glued some bits together making sure that I don't put two posts together when doing this because um, obviously they end on a post so I slice it out you can see here a little glue join there it's not the prettiest but it's there um, so that was that and then I put the, the 90 degree end on there and all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it in place I think uh, I'll use super glue for this to hold it more permanently because we want to move on with the layouts and before I do that though obviously when you've been doing all the work on your track when you've been doing all the scenic work static grass um, as well as doing the ballast and the painting you'll find the track gets very dirty 
and I'm gonna be getting to the point that I'm gonna have trees all up around here and this is gonna be an incredibly hard section to clean. I'll probably be able to get in from the end and the other end and just be careful of the trees. So that's something I'm a bit conscious of for the layout. I think that um, I will regret it, <laughs> but we'll see. But it might not get that dirty um, and I might be able to get like a track cleaning wagon to go over this bit. Um, but ultimately right now, because I've got paint and things on, I need to rub it off with something that's a bit more abrasive. Um, I'm sure some chemicals will work. But yeah, so I just wanted to cover that. So we'll glue that fence on and then we'll start having some fun with some more scenics. I like to glue it into the grass a bit. So I've got to somehow glue everything before it goes down. Maybe I need to just put bits of glue down the back of things and work my way over. Who knows? Work my way along. To make sure that the <laughs> tracks are right, just run a loco over it. Um, this goes a bit fast with the, the PP3 battery because it's 9 volts. You can see that it works fine. Spin it round on the track. That's right, it's going a bit fast. So if you ran it slower, there might be more issues. Um, but you know, you can spot little glue marks that are still looking high. So you can come back and focus on them. But I've stuck the fence on. When we're running slowly, we'll appreciate no glue on the track. What I want to do next is a few things. I went outside and I got some dirt. It's a bit of, kind of a mixture of uh, compost and the clay that's there. So we've got some of that, so we don't have to um, use some of the bits I've got. I'm not quite happy with what I've got. And I want to do a few things because this is going to be some area that's not going to have the best of growth. What I want to do and what I will lock it in with is the hairspray um, is I want to just drop dirt into areas, just take away some of the pure um, green areas. Um, so I just want to drop that into the corners, drop it down there and it will start just adding to having more colour in the layout. We can tap it down, we can hopefully then drop it down into those gaps and everything. And it's gonna just drop it around because we're gonna be adding some trees in a bit. And I want to have this bit done first because once the tree's in, it's gonna be harder to add into these areas. So just dusting it on and I can keep this for whatever I'm doing at the time. What I used was a sieve to help take down the big bits, so we just use small bits of dirt from outside. I think that'll be enough for that. What I want to do is on this inside edge is run a bead of glue. I've already got some blocked up gap here you might have seen in white. You can see that this was white here from, um, I forgot I had a gap there, I should have put masking tape over it. So I'm going to put some glue on here and drop some dirt on top of it so then the edge has just that little bit of dirt. You're not really going to see it as, a, as I'm looking at it but I know it's there and I'll just use my PVA glue and then a little brush to make room. And this will also help keep the fence in place because we're putting some glue on areas that might not have had glue when I was gluing it on. Don't 
Don't have to put too much on, it's going to dry clear anyway. But it's just enough to show that this isn't just all grass everywhere because I don't want my layout to just have that uniform look to it, um, which I'm getting close to doing all the time. We can just get our dirt and sprinkle it where we need to. The other thing I will do is put some of the same material that I've used for the leaves on some of the areas on this layout because obviously the leaves are going to be dropping down, it's not always going to be perfect. We can hoover this off afterwards if we get too much on the track but we're just going to be adding more and more colour into the layout, more textures. So visually, there'll be a little bit more to look at. Just come with my brush, gonna dab it in place, knock some bits around that aren't already on glue. No doubt we'd have to clean the track once this is dry, but we've added a bit more colour and texture into this area, which is exactly what I'm after. There's an argument there should be greenery growing in here, but when it's like this and the trees are up, it's gonna be harder to see. So I think we've just added enough in regards to different shades into the layout. Yeah, to make it work. So we'll let that dry. Oh, we don't even need to let it dry. We'll add some leaves. I have my tray from when we're doing our leaf work. So we have our different shades. So we can drop some of these on top. Again, adding more texture. To the layout. So when the trees are up, it makes sense what's going on. So it adds again a bit more colour to the layout, makes it a bit more interesting again. I don't want this just what to be one static grassed area, which looks okay. But to be an area which looks good. has a lot of texture. I think texture is the key word in this. And that's that. I'm still not keen on these bushes. I'm hoping the trees will help break them up and I can add some more bushes afterwards. But I think this is really coming together nicely. Um, to stick it all down, to make it stay, to use some of my hairspray that I used before. So lock that down. Let that dry, we can then clean the track and then we can come in with the trees. I'm really happy with how my trees turned out. Obviously, these look a bit floppy, but you look at trees, they're not always straight. Obviously, this one isn't very straight. Look at some of the others, yeah, not so bad. I'm happy with that. I've got some small ones here, they're good. I've got some larger ones, yeah, really pleased with these. Obviously, that's going to go up against the wall. I noticed because I sprayed my um, hairspray over the top of the glue it can have made globules of the the PVA so there are white spots but they're not really obvious so this is going to go on any that are looking bad then I might have to mess around with but I played with lots of different shades and really happy with how they're all looking if I'm honest with you they're going to look great on the layout so quite exciting from small to large you can really have some fun with it so let's get them attached
really happy with how this has come out. It's looking kind of fun. Obviously, we've got our glue that's going to dry. That will go clear. And if we can see any remnants of glue, we can add some flock where we need to. Uh, the next step is to run some static grass along here. Um, and that'd be good. I'm really happy with how all the trees are coming across because you'll see the loco running behind them. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for from this view. This kind of dense area of forestry, really. Or, yeah, it's just a tiny, tiny wood section. Um, you know, people have commented on, oh, it'd be nice if this was bigger, that was bigger. That's fine, but at the moment, I'm in a module at a time. So there's a station module. Yes, you could split that over two or three modules if you want, but we've got four modules, and they're going to have a feature each. So this is the trees, which I'm happy. It's kind of an advert for sea foam, isn't it? <laughs> All the different flock colours that you could put on. So that's that's really great. So obviously these need to dry. I want to just add on the front some of my static grass. So I'll probably wait until this is dried because I don't want to have this at an angle tilting over and then start leaning over and drying in the wrong position. So I'll probably have to leave that for an hour or two and come back to you. The trees have dried to a certain amount. The glue's still staying a bit white, which always concerns me. Um, but hopefully that will dry out and uh, we can get on with uh, enjoying how it looks. But I can add details where needed. I'm just going to use, as you've seen before, my spray. This is the matte lacquer that you've seen me use before. We're going to use that. To, it's a new packet. Um, going to seal off that. So we're going to spray over the area that we want to stick it on. Um, and then we'll apply our static grass. It's just from four millimeter static grass. Um, I'm using the um, static grass from Green Scenes, that's the one. Anyway, we'll get this done and then we'll put the static on. going to add one more layer of a uh, slightly different shade and then I think I'll be happy. I let this dry overnight and in the morning we can assess how the glue is looking underneath the trees um, and if we have to we can add some shrubbery um, but that will kind of sum it up. We can have a chat in the morning and uh, yeah, see how it went. It's the next day and it's dried. It's dried clear now uh, where the trees have gone in. So I'm happy with that. I was a bit concerned that I'd have to add in some more shrubbery uh, with the scenics that I have. But I'm happy with how it's all looking, how it will look when the loco comes through. It's going to be more about the scenics and about the loco uh, when you look at this part, which makes me happy because a lot of the time, like on my layout in the loft, I want to always have it so you can see the loco everywhere, but it's making me think a bit differently. You don't always have to see it. It's nice for it to be um, just, you know, a bit more covered from time to time anyway. Really happy with how the trees look. And I'm really pleased with the different shades that I picked. I wasn't sure how it would look. Um, I do feel like the centre ones are possibly a little bit bright, but actually they're okay. It was nice to add the leaves to the areas here. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like this is completely done. I can put this away now. I've still got to do the wiring on it, which is simple. It's two wires that will connect to the rest of the others. My plan is once I've got all the modules together to put it together. So I can put this up on the shelf now and I can move on to the next module, which will be the bridge module, which I've been looking forward to the most, um, but it's taken a, a little bit of planning to work out what I'm doing with the trestles um, to help obviously support the bridge. Um, so I'm happy with what I've come up with on that one. Um, so I guess we'll say bye. I'd like to say a big thank you to my subscribers, all the people that hit the like and the comments that I get. 
they're always well good feedback really I'm always happy to read them. Um, some have kind of said suggestions on what I can do, what I should do different, or if I did it again, what I could do different. Um, so that's actually very appreciative to hear because you kind of you store it up thinking, well, if I did this again, you'd do that. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. You've all been great. I've had a couple of new ones lately, so thank you for joining. If you'd like to join, look in the comments below or hit the join button uh, just below the video. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Big thank you to everyone that's helped me with these projects so far. Um, Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane, um, Tony's Trains, um, kind of being quite keen on all of this. Uh, Andy Hudson, um, obviously my family, they're, they get involved when I talk to about this, so big thank you to you guys. Anyway, see you next time on the next video. You take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.